today's content, I want to talk about Grand Theft Auto 6, or let's just say, I guess, uh, another Vice City. Now, guys, really quick. The trailer that was viewed, that was released, uh, got over a million views. And, of course, a lot of people were talking about it being possibly woke because now you have a female protagonist. And, of course, the word is that this protagonist, of course, is uh, trans or trans is this, however you might want to say it for the algorithm. But still at the same time, though, the game is not set to come out until 2025. Now, guys, I'm normally out here calling out the woke nonsense, and of course I will if, of course, it does end up becoming very, very woke. However, this video is not really about that. This video right here is more about my concerns with the overall story itself. Now, guys, I'm a bit of an old hat. All right, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know this, but if you ever played any old PlayStation 2, of course, if you were alive when it came out, please leave a comment in the comment section. When the PlayStation 2 was released back in 2001, it came out with a lineup of games that was absolutely ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I'm playing a bit of the trailer from Grand Theft Auto 3, and then, of course, you'll see some footage from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I wasn't able to come up with any from San Andreas, but those right there are kind of sort of the three uh, quintessential Grand Theft Auto games. I'll talk more about that here in a second, but I want to go in kind of a different direction for the final video of the day. Here's the thing. A lot of people aren't so much concerned about politics or whatnot. I think they're concerned more about the overall time period, whether this particular game is actually going to fit it. Now, let's go back in time to what I was saying before, 2001 PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 2. When the PlayStation 2 was released, you had an extremely, and I'm talking an extreme, catalog of classics. You had uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, which of course was the first time that they chose to use an actual immersive environment because the original Grand Theft Auto games were uh, basically almost like, it I wouldn't say it was side-scrollers, it was basically what you would do is you would see the uh, top of the vehicle. Uh, not as fun, of course, as what you would get in Grand Theft Auto 3. Of course, Max Payne came out at that time, frame remember all the TV spots. And, of course, Grand Theft Auto Vice City would come out the following year. And, like I said, you guys are seeing the old, the older footage. But also something else about the PlayStation 2, you had Metal Gear Solid 2. You had a lot of games, Silent Hill 2 especially. And, eventually, the PlayStation 2 would come up with more games that, of course, were pretty well good. But the thing about Grand Theft Auto was this here. It's not so much the fact that it was fun. And, of course, you've got idiots out there running their mouth about degeneracy. And some people claim it that they want it to be woke. But, in reality... The Grand Theft Auto series was always diverse. Think about it, it really was. Especially GTA Vice City. You had, uh, what was it? You had uh, Tommy Versetti. He was obviously an Italian, a 35-year-old transient that had just gotten out of prison. The Ferrellis, of course, were Italian. You had Cubans. You had uh, Haitians. You had uh, Colombians. Of course, that was also in Grand Theft Auto 3. Of course, you had Umberto Rabina. Something about that Vice City was so very, very, very memorable. I mean, I even remember the name of the strip club that you had to carry Mercedes Cortez to called the Pole Position. The story of the game was basically Tommy Versetti arriving in Vice City, of course, with a couple of associates, and they met up with Ken Rosenberg. The idea was to do a drug deal uh, with the main character's brother, Lance. I mean, not the main character, but the main supporting character, Lance Vance's brother. And, of course, the deal goes completely to crap. You find out later on that it was sabotaged. It's believed to have been uh, sabotaged by uh, Ricardo Diaz, who was voiced by Luis Guzman. Tommy Versetti, voiced by Ray Liotta. Uh, I think it's uh, Philip Michael Thomas, I think. The guy who played Tubbs in uh, Miami Vice voiced uh, Lance Vance. Of course, there was a uh, Bill Finchner and uh, Burt Reynolds did a voice character, Avery, Car Avery Carrington. A lot, of, uh, a, a lot of actors at that time were known to do the voice work behind that game. Tom Sizemore did Sonny Ferrelli. It was a classic game, classic story. I mean, I think that maybe the time period itself that was set upon was the 1980s. Coke, blow, strippers, of course, uh, to a certain extent, Miami yuppie culture, which is not really yuppie culture. But the thing about this game here, though, and people were obviously worried about was, of course, the girl stripping on the car. Now, guys, I'm not playing the trailer because I'm just giving you guys the B-roll footage. And, of course, I had to cut some things out because of copyright and, of course, because of YouTube's terms and policies. The main concern that people have about this particular product, or at least the one that I'm having right now outside of the potential wokeness or whatever, is the fact that the time period of today is not exactly going to make the game as popular. Now... Some of you out there may have played GTA 4 and GTA 5, and to me, those games were nowhere near as memorable. I've played GTA 4 and 5, as a matter of fact, I own Part 5. 
To me, I felt that they kind of traded in uh, the story for the overall environment. Of course, there's always this little subplot about buying a club and running it, of course, in part five, the bank robbery. The characters to me were almost not as, uh, I would say they were not as memorable as the characters from the original parts three, four, excuse me, part three, GTA uh, Vice City, and of course, uh, San Andreas, the game I did not mention very uh, a lot so far, but San Andreas was also a good game as well. I don't think that people know how to write video games or write stories for games or stories, period, nowadays. And, of course, they're relying more on the wokeness aspect to sell. Now, I haven't really mentioned the wokeness aspect, but I'm going to give you guys some comparisons in a second of why it is I think that people might want to hold off real quick, even though the leaks look pretty bad. Here's why you might want to hold off. Number one, the game does not come out till 2025. A lot of things could happen between, of course, the final month of the year and 2024. Also, to go on top of this, this game could find itself getting pushed back to uh, Christmas, obviously, to increase the sales of the product itself. But still, there are reasons for people not to jump the gun just yet, even though there are reasons, obviously, for people to go ahead and say that it's probably on the woke side. And I'm going ahead and going to explain that now. Real quick, I want to bridge this video. Okay, I want to go ahead and bridge this video before I get to why it is that people should not panic or anything. The Grand Theft Auto franchise, and I think I alluded to it earlier, has always been a diverse franchise, okay? So if anybody's out here screaming there's not enough representation, I'm sorry, but the Grand Theft Auto franchise has always had representation. It always had, I mean, they even had a black center one in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Also, something else, too, people who are putting up tweets like, uh, obviously, the West is degenerate, this, that, and the other, or there's Zionists bringing this degenerate product. I hate to tell you this, but the Grand Theft Auto series has always been somewhat degenerate. It's a video game. As I've said before, video games are good in moderation. If you know how to balance things out, I'm not opposed to video games. I have a PS4, I have a PS3. I'm probably going to buy a PS5 and, try and start a gaming channel at some point in time. Definitely a walkthrough channel. And, of course, I'll probably play the Grand Theft Auto series in those games because I was pretty good at it. Just some stuff to do on the weekend, not going out to the bar, you know, don't have a girl over anything, you know, just additional ways of uh, expanding my audience. The thing is this right here, though. Being able to run people over with cars, don't condone, but of course has been in this video game for a while, this video game series since the very, very beginning. Uh, the ability to say certain words, of course, Grand Theft Auto does have a lot of profanity. Killing opponents, this, that, that. This has kind of always been a staple of Grand Theft Auto. It's always been somewhat uh, degenerate in nature. Strippers, strip clubs, bars, clubs, banging hookers, stuff like that. It's always been a part of the series. So when I hear people complain about the degeneracy of it, as long, I mean, I'll just put it this way here. If you stick to the original formula on GTA, you probably shouldn't have a problem. It's not going to be that different than anything else. And like I said, the wokeness factor I'll talk about here in a second, because I think people might want to relax before they go any further in calling it this, even though it definitely looks like it's going to be. But don't worry, we'll get to that here in a second. The thing is this right here, to all those people who are screaming that Grand Theft Auto needs more diversity, I want to go ahead and tell you now, it's always been very diverse. It's always been very degenerate, and it's part of the reason why it is that we love to play this series. Personal favorite one, of course, was Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I kind of hinted at this in the very, very beginning of the game. 35-year-old, transient male, Ray Leo does the voice. You're playing basically a mob associate or a mob hitman or a mob enforcer, and you're basically building your criminal empire. As a matter of fact, I'm a little bit upset that PlayStation Network has not pulled in the Scarface, The World is Yours game. That one right there is really and truly one of my favorite games. My favorite game to play outside of GTA Vice City on the old PlayStation 2. I really wish PlayStation would either A, remake that game for PS5 or possibly put that game on PlayStation Network. You talk about a fun game, you talk about building a criminal empire, that game right there was absolutely lit. Or I would love to see a remake of the uh, 2005 version of the PlayStation 2 game, The Punisher. That was a fun game. Fact of the matter is that people play the Grand Theft Auto series to have fun. Now, I will probably talk about this a little bit more in the next section, but to me, parts four and five lost a lot of the edge, probably because they decided they wanted to make the open world a lot more immersive, and they chose to not focus as much on the story. That's one of the chief complaints that I had with Parts 4 and 5, but Parts 4 and 5 were still ultimately good games. The most memorable storylines are probably going to be GTA Vice City and, of course, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Part 3 was kind of bland, but still very fun. The soundtracks were always good. The trailer, the best trailer that was out there, probably uh, uh, the Grand Theft Auto original trailer, the Vice City one, where uh, you heard a flock of seagulls uh, and I run so far away. And, of course, the Welcome to the Jungle one, which I can't play here 
in this video, but the fact of the matter is that people who are complaining about the possibility of it being degenerate in nature, I think you might want to step back. The wokeness factor, however, is the thing that you will have to worry about, but I'll be explaining much, much more why it is you might want to pump the brakes just yet because you've still got over a year, possibly two years, for them to make some form of rewrites or whatnot. When they release the trailer this early, what they're doing is they want to see the engagement, they want to see the comments, they want to see what people are saying. That does not mean that they have fully finished the game. What it means is that they finished the vast majority of uh, the scenes that they have cut. They have not put them together or done their edits yet. So I would hold up before actually saying anything, but still, you've got other content creators out there already calling it woke and some, of course, not calling it woke. And like I said, they may, in fact, be right. It could very, very well be that way. But you've still got over a year and a half before you know the real truth on the situation. So sit tight. Even though the leaks don't look good, just sit tight before making a full-on judgment. If this game does ultimately turn out to be woke, which of course is what we're hearing, and the trailer itself looks like they may even lean into the aspect with the female protagonist, I want you to know right now, chances are the female protagonist is probably not well written. A lot of the female protagonists that we are seeing nowadays, like say Ray from the Star Wars, the ex Star Wars extended film, 7, 8, and 9, which I just did not like, was unrelatable. A lot of the female protagonists that they're writing for films and television shows are completely unrelatable. There was also that girl that they brought in for Doctor Who. I was never really a fan of that, but I understand how big that show is with the crowd from the United Kingdom. This is not like back in the days where Sigourney Weaver was the ultimate, as Ellen Ripley was the ultimate female protagonist. She was written very, very well for what was two very, very good films, parts one and two, Alien and Aliens. Of course, Alien 3 is oftentimes viewed to be the weakest, but I think that if you look at Alien Resurrection, Covenant, and anything that's come out since then, you would obviously argue that part three is infinitely better than those. Sarah Connor, before that final Terminator film, was a pretty good female protagonist. They're not writing them the way they need to be writing them. I mean, hell, even Katniss Everdeen was a good female protagonist, in my opinion, even though Jennifer Lawrence would go on to say some very, very stupid things uh, afterwards. But still, the fact of the matter is this here. Female protagonists are not written well in film or in video games themselves. They just aren't. Which then brings me to this aspect of what to expect and is this entire situation going to be, uh, let's just say, a situation that ends up being regrettable. Now, I said in the first part of this video in the first five minutes that this game is not going to be released until sometime in 2025. Here's what I want to say about that. Let's use another example for what I mean while we're going to this. Back in 2018-19, the uh, filmmakers over at MGM were starting to really and truly get into making the film Die Another, uh, excuse me, No Time to Die. Now, spoiler alert, in that film, they ended up killing the character of James Bond, which makes me wonder why you guys are even going to try to reboot the series. A lot of ways you could have gone, a lot of different ways, and I may even create a character analysis channel, of course, where I discuss exactly the ways that they should have gone with that particular film. I personally think that the end of the film should have uh, featured James Bond being rescued rather than being killed. The reason why was because the little disease that he had been infected only affects those who are exposed to him that have his DNA. So only his daughter would have been, which we found out that was only his daughter, would have been exposed. So it would have created a great angle to redo the series from that moment on with a different Bond who we would know has some form of trauma and repression. He's got to keep certain things. There's obviously a way, a reason why he acts the way he does. Normal men don't just sleep with women like crazy, shoot people and blow things up, and of course not have uh, some form of issue or trauma get developed later on. Especially given the fact that Craig's character of Bond would have been a man probably in his early 40s, which is exactly what the James Bond character was. Of course, if you want to go to the Ian Fleming's novels, you would see that he was more of a tool. I personally liked the Craig portrayal, but many people believe that the Dalton portrayal is the most um, real to the stories. And I know what you're saying. I thought we were talking about Grand Theft Auto. We are talking about Grand Theft Auto. I'm just giving you an example of why it is you might want to hold off before screaming and hollering full-blown woke, even though it does look like they're going in that direction. Here is the thing. There was a controversy about rebooting the series, the Bond series, with a female Bond, a black woman, Naomi. Uh, well, I can't remember. I, just, I don't even want to say anything any further with that because of a... Uh, YouTube's community guidelines, but still at the same time, there were also other articles that came out. Daniel Craig himself. No, James Bond should not be a woman. 
We all thought that Bond was going to be going woke. And, of course, we all thought that Bond was going to be overshadowed by this other agent. The truth be told about the Bond franchise is that they had other, other movies where a female protagonist was brought in to go along with Bond, which is ultimately what they did in No Time to Die, and the lady didn't even get much screen time. So we were kind of hoodwinked on the situation. Ultimately, go back and look at some of the films. Tomorrow Never Dies, you had Michelle Yeoh. Die Another Day, you had Halle Berry in there. Okay, um, The Spy Who Loved Me, you had Barbara Bach, who's married to Ringo Starr. I think still married to him to this day. The fact of the matter is that female protagonists were brought in to be Bond's equal. And a lot of people at that time frame wouldn't have really said anything because there wasn't a whole lot of news coming out about those films. Not like the way it is today. So when you get leaks and whatnot that makes you think something is going to be bad, you might want to sit back and withhold judgment. This is not like The Last of Us Part Two, where leaks were coming out and there were a lot of ethical problems. And, of course, you found out that Naughty Dog Studios was losing workers, all kinds of stuff like that. So that way, when people still went into the actual uh, game itself, a lot of people got disappointed. Now, I'm not going to go through that in this video, or else the video would then be about two hours long. And then, of course, all my rants and rants about that right there does not relate to what's going on with GTA. What I'm saying is you might want to wait and see first before you pass judgment, and not to mention there's a whole year and a half to come where they're probably going to be doing rewrites, re-edits, and they're probably going to change some things in the story itself. Either way, though, the trailer looks like what you would probably see in Miami, Florida today, even though Miami and Vice City are not the same. Vice City is based upon Miami. The fact of the matter is this here. Could this entire thing become woke? Yes. If it ends up being woke, don't buy the game. I'm telling you right now, the best thing, the best way you can beat these wokes outside of calling them out is just don't buy the product. Don't give these people the money. If you give these people the money, they're going to continue to pump out crappy products. I'll give you one more example. How many of you guys out there have ever played Madden or the Madden games? I bring it up Madden for a reason. You see, the Madden franchise is the only franchise that is making and I mean, they're the only franchise that is making any form of uh, NFL football pro uh, games. The gameplay has gotten crappier and crappier and crappier, okay? It has gotten, it's terrible. I mean, it's gotten to the point to where they care more about Ultimate Team and they care about the people buying the add-ons and stuff. The truth be told about the Madden franchise is that it completely lost its way. And while it's making attempts to try to fix the gameplay, it's not actually done that. In some cases, it's even worse, and as a result of that, they've become reliant upon uh, the other things that would come, the other perks, ultimate team, tournament, stuff like that, rather than the actual gameplay itself. As a result of this, people are starting to wake up to this, and they're not wanting to buy Madden anymore. If you really and truly want to beat these people, or these woke corporations, the best thing you can do is, of course, just not buy the product, don't give them the money, don't feed the beast. And with that right there being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and halt this video now. Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section. There's going to be a lot of content out this weekend. There's probably going to be one to two videos out tomorrow. There may be one to two videos out on Sunday. There's this ammo uh, ordeal. Of course, uh, the country's running out of gunpowder. There's a situation with Ramaswamy, which, of course, I'm coming on a couple of days late on that one, but I still want to release it anyways. And there's also this little Taylor Swift psyop going on that's been getting people like Tim Poole and Jack Posobiec going back and forth at one another, and people are, off to the, are obviously a little bit concerned on how the Swiffers could affect things next year. I will have those thoughts out later on this weekend. With that right there being said, guys, please make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later.